Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate on the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is uh, VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Nights, and I welcome Ben, VK7, BN. Hey, Justin, good to be back in the studio. How are you doing? Not too bad. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I've got Ben in the, the studio with some really nice uh, portable bits and pieces, but just before we get to that... Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just want to remind people uh, they can call in on repeater two, um, and I'll just turn on uh, repeater two here. So, <laughs> um, uh, and also uh, on the um, the YouTube chat channel, which we're monitoring right at the moment. So, you can call in on either of those, or ask questions, or uh, or any comments. The other thing I just wanted to do was, of course, welcome everybody to twenty twenty one. Happy New Year. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> So this is our first uh, first DATV night for 2021, and we've got a, a, we've actually got a pretty full night tonight. So uh, of bits and pieces. Firstly, I'll put out a bit of a call to Kevin uh, Norris VK7 HKN. Uh, I mentioned last uh, last uh, week that Kevin was going into uh, into hospital to have some fairly serious um, uh, operations done on his heart. They've been done. Um, Kevin is recuperating. Uh, I haven't been to see him yet, but I'm I'm working on it. Um, so he's recuperating in the uh, in the Royal. Uh, so a big shout out to uh, Kevin and uh, get well soon, and hopefully we'll hear you back on the airwaves in the not too distant future. So yeah. uh, good stuff. So um, Ben, portable operation and specifically digital portable, portable operation. operation. Okay, well. When we say portable, uh, I know Justin and I like to talk a lot about uh, lightweight operation, and a, as you'll see a bit later tonight, we're doing it wrong. We, what, we, what we're doing at the moment, we can no longer call lightweight operation. But I'll, I'll save that for the video later. So, probably, you know, one of the most important things with portable operation is power. And, you know, m most of us, uh, bread and butter is a LiPo battery, usually Certainly in past years, it has been, you know, the one that comes out of a RC yep. car or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem with those, particularly if you don't get them in a hard case, is they tend to be a bit um, fragile. Correct. Uh, they also need to be charged in a particular way with a balance feed. Yep. Um, my, my first battery went puff, so I decided probably it's not a good idea to keep using it. 
and then so it actually expanded out to not not not, not it didn't balloon but it was definitely a little uh, bit on squishy. the way yeah yeah okay right. so I, I decided that i'd get rid of it before mm. anything major happened they can be a bit scary yes <laughs> I, i've seen those youtube videos too <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second battery was a hard case but i just wasn't using it at the time okay and uh, i managed to pass on to someone who d- does um cool. radio controlled aircraft okay but, you know, th- that it's been about, what, four or five years um, since LiPos really came on the scene for Correct. us ham radio guys. Yep. And since then, things have progressed. And I couldn't help but notice Justin was using a, a LiPo battery, which was a replacement for an SLR. So, SLA battery. Hmm. SLA li- would be a, impressive. A LiPo battery. Yeah, yeah a LiPo battery. Hmm. Um, so, I thought, that, that's great. It will give me more power. It's light. Yep. There's only two terminals to deal with, no balance lines. Fantastic. Um, so what I so I went to J-Car on the weekend and, and bought one of these SLAs. They were only $79, which, you know, compared to Hobby King, where you're probably paying close to $60 for a 4,400 milliamp hour mm. um, and life po. And yeah. what I originally paid for mine. Yeah. <laughs> plus the AccuCell charge, which you'd then need for it, yep. plus the balance lines. Plus the LiPo storage case, yes. uh, you know. You're up for a lot of money. Yeah. You're actually up for a lot of money. Yeah. So th- these J-Car ones, or J-Car uh, LifePos, are actually designed to replace the uh, SLAs you see in UPSs. Like yeah. your, many of you have a, a UPS with your NBN connection to yes. make sure that uh, it doesn't stop when you really need it. Correct. Uh, so, again, I bought one of these. I had a little watt meter that I had to... Had to which I've just attached it to hot glue because it's really nice to yeah. see what we've got. So if we cut to the close-up uh, thing definitely. there. Hang on. Um, we can do that. I have the technology. Yeah. Um, uh, oh. We did have the technology. Yeah, we did have the technology. Hang on. Let me try that. Cool. There we um. go. <laughs> so if I go like that and I'll get uh, and we'll Justin to focus. Do a there so go. there you go. So as you can sort of see, it is. Uh, you want to zoom out a fraction? Yeah. Oh, that way. So as you can see here, it's just a typical lithium-sized battery. There's my little watt meter hot glue on on the fantastic. top there. Gee, I'll tell you what, hot glue is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> um, Anderson connectors all the way through because I like Anderson connectors. And yep. except for there we go on there. So I just made up a little adapter. Yep. Um, the nice thing about that is I can unplug that, plug it into that side there yep. to reverse it, yep. and then I can actually watch the charge as it goes in. Yeah, okay. So with, with the help of Justin, he actually pointed out that these things charge using constant current uh, lead, like a lead acid does. Yes. So right, I found I didn't have to go and buy a new um, new battery charger just for this SLA. Yep. I could still use my AccuCell and just set right. it for lead acid 12 volt. Yep. Away it goes. They're made as replacement for the sealed lead acid batteries, so they can basically be treated the same way. Yeah. All the electronics for the balance charging and everything's oh, inside the box. Yeah. So, so as you can see, thirteen point two seven volts yep. at the moment. They say you should start thinking about recharging it at when it goes under twelve point eight. Um, thanks to the magic of the circuitry inside it, it will cut out when the bat- voltage gets dangerously low for yep. lithiums. Yeah which is really nice. That was one of my primary concerns with these things. Yep. Um, I recently pulled a battery apart with a, um, out of a bike light. Oh, so okay. They, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they'd done a custom mold around an 18650. Yep. And th- that was their way of getting uh, $80 out of me for a replacement battery rather than the actual $20 replacement. So right. I cut open the mold, yep. pulled the battery out. Yep. The battery's chem- chemically dead. It oh, put, okay. You put a multimeter across it, it reads 0. 0.06 volts. Ouch. Mm. So, okay. So, again, $20 battery replacement, put yep. it back in, works a treat. Yeah, so, there you go. There you go. I so, love it. Yeah. So, anyway, that is the power. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing which... Go we, back? We, we, not quite yet. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Justin's really excited about this <laughs> thing, so we'll... we'll um, oh, we'll, and we've got uh, Harry, VK7HXT, on... Uh, Hey Harry. On the uh, hello from a soon to be new radio operator VK7 HXT. Fantastic, cool. great to hear. Um, so, 
one of the things when I go portable is uh, obviously log- logging is a big big thing, particularly with photo and parks, because yep. people get really annoyed with you if you do not log their contacts with you uh, in those things because they're chasing awards and the like. Mm. Um, I've tended to find doing it with a pen and paper a bit of a pain in the backside. Okay, yes. Uh, but I've also found that there, that there is an app which many uh, parks and social activators will be familiar with called Fast Log Entry. Yep. Uh, which allows Tablets. a particular a particular syntax to top put stuff in. I'll actually yep. bring that up. Yep. But the key thing there was how do you get a laptop or a tablet out into the field? Because they are big and they're, they're heavy. heavy. <laughs> so I think the best thing to describe is I took my MacBook Pro and I put it in the washing machine. And so we, <laughs> we, we ended up with this. Now, if you want to zoom out again, so we have so, um. give some size here. So what we have is this oh. tiny... Well, there's, there's the yeah, battery. There's, there's the battery for comparison. <laughs> Laptop. It's complete about with, the same size, actually. Yeah. About the same form factor. Complete with keyboard. Yep. So this is called a GPD-7 um, laptop. And I, I bought the second hand off um, a fellow ham, Scott Brad. <laughs> and it very much rocks around Windows, which I'll bring up here, hopefully in one tick. And I'll just make sure this is still behaving. And also, which is not what is nice, because it runs Windows, if you want to zoom in, it will run Ham Radio Deluxe. Ooh. So I, I have my rig control there. Uh, as you can see here, I've got this connected to a FT817. Yep. Sitting here next to it. Yeah, and you might be wondering how you're doing that because that, as you can see, there are no cables attached to this. <laughs> Look, Mum, no hands. Yeah. yeah. And if we take a look here, I'm just going to bring the 817 into view. There is a, actually a real there, radio here. Yeah, there is a... Hang on. Which way? That oh, way. Yeah. Uh, there we go. A dongle right here. And this dongle is taking the cat interface, which is serial, and turning it into Bluetooth. Now, yeah, now because, you know, mo- most modern computers these days have Bluetooth, I just connect to, connect to the Bluetooth interface and away we go. So, Which is really handy portable yeah. because you don't actually have Ooh. to deal with cables and all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, there you can see there's the... Um, Sort of the logging window, and if I go, I can go add a contact here. I go add, and it'll bring up the. I have to, have to think about it. it. It will bring up the add contact screen. Okay. And okay, if cool. I if I have internet connectivity, so if, if I tether to my mobile phone, right. if I'm in range, yep. and put my call sign in, it will, it will look me up and find my details and. And so, log it to LOTW or whatever. Yeah, all, all automatically, which is fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, That's very impressive, man. It's, it's very handy. And for those, again, who, who know Ham Radio Deluxe, uh, you'll know that you can do digital modes with it. And, and, of course, again, Windows device. This thing's got an Intel Atom CPU in it. Okay. It's also got 8 gig of memory, which means that it is actually pretty okay with WSJT. And an SSD, so it's reasonably yeah. fast. Yeah. It's... Uh, the only catch, and I haven't gotten that far yet, is although I can do cat commands over the air, okay. I can't do audio. Oh, okay. So, so you're still listening to it through the... Um... So, I mean, I, I could possibly use the speakers and the audio device on the or the speaker on, on yep. the radio if I wanted to, or I could go a little more up class. Now, I've, I've swiped this off my my FT1200 at home. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, yeah. which is a Yaesu... Uh, this is a Yaesu SCU17 unit. Okay. So this would normally plug in via USB to the laptop. Yep. Uh, it would then provide two COM ports for cat and push to talk, as well as the sound card interface back into the radio. And then you've got your fully digital operating well and truly. Uh, out in, in, into your portable device out in SOTA. You could do your RITI, you could do your PSK, your WSJT. You can even set, take a photo on your phone, upload it to your, your computer, and now, do slow scan television of where you are. Now I'm getting jealous. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'll, I'll hand this to Justin. I think Justin, you could probably work out the weight of these sort of things. So I mean, they're, well, they're not terribly heavy, are they? That's that's less. Hang on, I know what this is because th- these the LiPo batteries, SLAs are normally of this size are normally about three point three kilograms. Yeah. A LifePo is just over a kilogram, 
So if that's a kilogram, it's it's about a kilogram. It's or it's under a kilogram. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, that's and just the size, uh, just fantastic. Yeah. Love it. And again, this is probably another or oh, five six hundred grams if you want to bring the digital unit along. Yeah. Okay. Um, for for me, if I, I'm not really worried about the difference of about a kilo in my mm. in, in my stuff because I'm a bit more of a casual soldier and parks yeah. person. I'm, yep. Um, I'm not doing day treks and all that sort of stuff yet, but yeah, that that might come in the future. But then I'll probably at that point be actually fit enough to do that without worrying me mm. as well. So, okay. Okay. So this is what I'm hopefully going to start getting out in the field and using a bit more. And I'm, I'm you are all familiar probably by now because we've talked enough about it with the NFED antennas yep. that I use. So that the NFED will be connected to the eight one seven for all the HF stuff. Okay. Um, I might work on the designs a bit. Again, you'll see some videos this evening which leave me going, oh, I need to try that. So, <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, the, the infants are quite a Pandora's box and a bit of a rat hole uh, well, once you cool. start investigating them. So, cool. So, that, that's my current portable setup, which is probably, you know, a, a lot different to what it was a few years ago. Uh, uh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think last time. I was here talking to you about portable setups. I was using my iPad to hmm. uh, use Rumlog, which is app on the iPad, and that was still a manual thing. It wouldn't talk to the to the radio. To yeah, yeah, yeah. The radio, and um, I had the uh, the RC. Yep. LifePo, which you know you, you tend to be trying not to drop or uh, poke or anything like that, lest it um, get got very angry with you. Um, the, the other disadvantage yeah. with the RC that I'm not sure we mentioned was the voltage of it, um, because it's a it's eleven point one. Yeah, volts. so so the, so the three cell lipo. Yeah. Is, yeah, eleven volts. The four cell goes up to I think four to six. sixteen. Yeah. Fourteen to so sixteen, depending on what what you've got in the the packs. Yeah. So which is nowhere near the thirteen point eight volts you want. Yeah, um, a four, four cell lipo is thirteen point two. Yeah, uh, which is just nice, and that's more or less what that that is yeah. from memory. Um, they, they talk on here about the float voltage being fourteen point. Or what I guess is the maximum charge voltage, fourteen point yeah. six volts. Yeah, okay. Um, which I mean, yeah, it, as I said, it's currently sitting at thirteen point two. I haven't had it much further down under thirteen yep. as yet. But yeah. then again, I've I've just had it sitting on the eight one seven in, in the bedroom as yeah. a receiver. Okay. And that, that also, if you remember last week, I was talking about the uh, 705 and the fact that you need uh, you need more than uh, more than 12 volts at yeah. least uh, to get the 10 watts out of it. That would certainly give you the 10 watts. Yeah. Well and truly. So, uh, uh, and it would only drop down to about 8, eight, eight watts uh, after a while. Yeah. So. Whereas I, I looked up the 817 and they're good anywhere between, I think, that's at eight volt and sixteen volt, so keep bit of range there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get the the, the five uh, yeah. five watts, so that so. that is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, Ben. Well, it's always a pleasure coming in here and doing a bit of show and tell. Well, and I, I look forward to actually seeing it. What what, what I could ask you to do yeah. is take some video of yeah. you actually using it in the field. That yeah. would be fantastic, and we can do a little feature on. Yeah on how it looks and works. For sure. And, and at, at, again, as Justin saw a bit earlier today, I've got some cool video features that we're probably going to see uh, in the studio at some point in the near future, we hope. Correct. So <laughs> stay tuned for that one as well, folks. Correct. So absolutely fantastic, Ben. Yep. No worries, it's Justin. Really, really good. And I, I look forward to uh, working you in the field on a fully digital, fully portable arrangement. I'll, I'll definitely let you know when that will happen. Uh, it's definitely going to happen during February because I've got five weeks off work <laughs> during Feb. And, and it's been approved today. It was approved yeah, <laughs> y yesterday, which made me very happy. There you go. Um, so I do definitely plan to get, get out in some places and um, make some contacts. So. Cool. Generate some RF. Yes. I love it. No worries. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Ben. Yep. Cheers. We'll just do a bit of a reset uh, of the uh, the studio, and uh, we'll be right back.
Okay, we're uh, we're back in the uh, back in the studio with a slightly reset uh, arrangement. Um, so the uh, the next thing that I thought we might be able to just show you is um, there is actually, and we can <laughs> we can do the same thing with the. Uh, with the let me oh there we go um in fact we can zoom in even further how would that be <laughs> what you are looking at here is um oh yes it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't like the uh, refresh rate on the uh, oled display Okay, what you're looking at here is the N7 uh, DDC. The N7 DDC, that's the amateurs uh, who designed this uh, particular ATU. Um, but N7 DDC, um, automatic antenna tuning unit. Um, it's called an ATU 100, as it says on the front. Um, the, specs, uh, the specs are quite good. Um, just let me go to the spec page and I'll quickly run through uh, what they say, the technical characteristics, that's it. Um, so uh, it runs on a little lipo, uh, lipo battery that's inside uh, that you charge through the, uh, the, the little mini USB on the front. Um, it uh, operates from about 10 to 15 volts. Um, it's uh, maximum current uh, consumption is about 400 milliamps, which uh, is a bit heavy. Um, typically, it's it's 150 to 200. Um, maximum of 100 watts through it, um, and I have put 100 watts through it, and it uh, it certainly uh, is uh, is capable of that. The minimum tuning uh, wattage, which is usually the one of the sticking points with these things, is five watts. So. Um, the 817 that Ben had uh, would certainly, um, on the full 5 watts, would certainly get this to trigger and start to auto-tune. Uh, on the uh, the IC705, I'll go into that in a little, in a short while. It, it It's interesting with the 705, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, it actually measures the, the power, uh, the SWR, and also the power that is reaching the antenna, uh, and also uh, once it's tuned, it gives you the inductance and the capacitance that it is put in place to compensate uh, to do the match. Uh, it comes up on the little screen, and I've got some screenshots of that in a sec. Um, it um, measurement steps at power up. Uh, it's 10 watts uh, to point. It's 0 0.1 of a watt is the measurement step. Um, and uh, the accuracy of the power measurements about 10%, so it's it's reasonably reasonably accurate. Um, and the maximum amount of inductance it can include um, is about 8.53 micro henrys, uh, but it can step that down uh, to, uh, with uh, 0 0.05 micro henry um, steps. So that's not bad. And the maximum capacitance that it can actually put in place to match is uh, 1869 picofarads and then that drops in 10 picofarad uh, steps so um so what i will do given i i'm glad i took some uh, i'm actually glad i took some uh, some screenshots of uh, of its operation because it um it it's actually <laughs> I didn't realise the uh, the refresh rate was going to be quite so uh, quite so bad. Okay, what we've got here, these are some screenshots I took of, of using the unit um, last night, um, and you can see it, the display. Um, you go, you push the tune button, the big green button on the uh, on the side. Um, and put it into tune mode, and you can see the tune mode on the uh, on the uh, display. You then start transmitting, um, and you can see here um, the power of 14, uh, 14 watts um, at two point two eight. This is whilst it's tuning, so it's it's getting there. 
you can see what go is going out of the antenna. It's estimated as being 6.3 watts and the efficiency being 43%. So then once it's tuned uh, and you hear it clicking away, they are not latching relays. They are normal relays, which is why I think the current capacity is uh, the current consumption is actually quite high on it because it's having to keep those relays energized. Um, once you uh, once it's tuned, um, you can actually see. Um, you can come in, Mark. <laughs> once once it's tuned, the interesting thing is what comes up on the display is the compensation capacitance and the compensation inductance to get it to match. So you actually get a bit of an idea about how far away from a, uh, a resistive load uh, it actually is. So it, it, that's quite a nice little feature that. Um, and, and that just comes up. You see I've stopped transmitting. There's no power um, uh, going through. But it, what it's telling you is um, that uh, uh, that's the compensation that's put in place for this particular antenna on this particular frequency uh, to get a match of 1.1 uh, 1, 1 to 1.3 or better. Um, and there is also a mode you can put it in uh, called an auto mode where if it goes away from uh, 1 to 1 1.3, if it's anything worse than 1 to 1 1.3, it starts a retune. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll tune through uh, and try and uh, better that match. Um, but uh, the, now the, the, the really nice, uh, the nice thing, I think that's, that's oh, now, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, once, it's, um, once it's tuned and it's telling you this, um, if you hit the button again, it does a reset. So, and you hear all of the, uh, the relays in the unit um, reset, um, and you can see it, it goes back to, uh, to zero inductance and zero capacitance. Uh, so it just tells you that everything's been reset. Um, now the reason my fingers, you see it between my fingers, is that that little reset arrangement is not on the screen for very long, and I, I had to capture it with the, um, with the phone, which was a bit of, a, a bit of an issue. Uh, I had to to uh, to uh, had not enough uh, fingers to push buttons on phones and bits and pieces, so that's the reason why. Now, what's inside? Uh, it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty uneventful inside, but um, you can see there's a whole bunch of relays. There's a whole bunch of inductances and um, surface mount capacitances down this side of the board here, and there are a whole lot on the underside of this. Right up here, hang on, let me get the pencil. Right up here, you can see there is a little surface mount IC. Uh, that's a little pick chip uh, that you can uh, program, I understand, through that USB on the front. Uh, there is a little USB uh, PCB that sits underneath the front of this uh, that I assume is the interface to the, uh, to the IC, but also is the, um, the charge circuit for the battery, which there's a LiPo battery which sits underneath this particular PCB. Uh, there's a bit of a, uh, um, a matching arrangement, matching transformer in the back here and a few other uh, inductors and bits and pieces in here. But that's all in a little uh, self-contained box, so uh, which uh, I have to say is um, is a pretty uh, pretty impressive little box. Um, uh, and uh, if we go tune, there we go into tune mode. So if I, I started uh, putting some power through here, it would start to try and tune after it uh, after it got to above uh, five uh, five watts. Um, and uh, yeah, then it reset. You go through a reset, and uh, and uh, you can start again with another frequency. So uh, anyway, that's the uh, the ATU one hundred. It is um, in its fully. It's available in its fully assembled and tested form, which is this form. For I think it was about one hundred and forty dollars Australian landed uh, here. Um, there's probably some other deals on the uh, on the. Uh, uh, on the net if you uh, care to have a bit of a look. Uh, there are a few different configurations um, of, of front panels. There are two other buttons that you can actually put uh, on this particular version. 
Um, and those, uh, those buttons are a bypass button and an auto button. Um, the bypass button literally bypasses uh, the unit altogether. Um, on this particular unit there are two UHF connectors, antenna and RF in, um, and they, um, uh, the bypass button literally connects one to the other, so it takes this out of, out of uh, circuit altogether. Um, so there are some other buttons that, uh, and other configurations um, that you can buy uh, on the net. Um, when you are charging it through the USB port, this little charge light uh, comes on, little red LED, and then goes off once it's charged. Um, it doesn't take very long uh, to charge. Um, it does also come, one of the, uh, the nice things with it um, is, uh, if we go here, um, there is a technical description of the, uh, the auto tuner board uh, from uh, N7DDC. Um, this is for firmware 3.0, which is what's on here. Uh, I understand that there is a 3.1 and a 3.2 that are out now. Um, so I might look at whether you can uh, you can upgrade the firmware in there. Um, it's uh, five to seven inductances and five to seven capacitors uh, in that configuration that I was talking about. Um, the one in here has got SMA connectors, not uh, not UH, uh, UHF connectors on it. So there are some obviously some other configurations, but it does go through all the different uh, types of screen uh, that you can use with it: the bypass mode, the automatic mode, the special modes of operation, uh, and then the uh, the default uh, change to default settings. And it does go into uh, some of the things that you can set in the um, uh, in the actual uh, EE prom. Um, because the code is available on GitHub, um, so you can um, uh, fully open source. Um, and in fact, the interesting thing is um, <laughs> the interesting note on here, which you don't see very often. Uh, attention: there are no restrictions and prohibitions on the use of this material for any purpose, as well as any related material. The author of which is N7DDC. So he's actually made it uh, totally available um, and uh, and thrown it out there to the uh, to the world. Um, the other thing that is available on the uh, in the GitHub uh, arrangements is a full circuit diagram uh, that is uh, shows you uh, how it's all put together, um, and uh, you can see uh, which of the pins on the uh, on the microprocessor um, uh, are used for the different. Uh, areas in the box so um i i have to um i have to acknowledge uh, michael sweeney vk7 uh, mrs uh, who first showed me this down at um down at signet uh, i was doing some assessments for uh, for the signet scouts and michael bought this little box out and we actually used it in the practical assessment <laughs> to uh, to tune the antenna so um, uh, I was uh, suitably impressed that uh, I went out and uh, and purchased one. And the more uh, the more research I actually do on these little unit, uh, the more impressed I am of it. So uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, the um, uh, the ATU one hundred. Now thus far, I, I've done a little bit of experimenting with it. Um, uh, the one thing that I have found, and I have yet to probably prove this. Um, definitively, but using it with the IC705, I think <laughs> there are some smarts in the IC705 transmitter that um, limits the power based on the SWR that it's actually seeing coming back. Um, and so if your antenna is not uh, terribly close to being vaguely tuned um, one of the issues the 705 has is it shuts the power level off and and takes it down to quite low levels which is too low for this to start tuning <laughs> so I don't know whether there is with the 705 the ability to switch that particular safeguard off I suspect there probably isn't because it is it is a safeguard for the PA um, but so one of the frustrations that I had was um, it, it uh, basically the 705 was shutting down 
and not giving enough power to get this to start to auto tune um, where in fact if you started to uh, to uh, uh, get the antenna somewhere near resonance um, it would start to tune uh, and do quite a good job at then matching uh, matching your transmitter to the uh, antenna so <laughs> so um, traps for young players um, and the 705 can certainly um, uh, can certainly supply the five uh, the minimum of five watts to uh, to get this to start to auto tune. So um, so anyway, that's the um, the the uh, the A ATU 100. Uh, very nice little unit um, and uh, and uh, worth a, worth a look if you're looking for a uh, automatic antenna tuning unit. So there you go. Um, now, what I might do is, if Richard uh, Richard is out uh, in the um, in the uh, the next room, I'll get Richard to uh, to come into the studio. If you're out there, Richard, and you're actually listening, um, uh, we'll just get Richard uh, Richard in, calling Mr. VK7ZBX, VK7ZBX. Uh, this is VK7 OTC. Uh, can you uh, make your way into the uh, into the studio, Richard? <laughs> Whilst Richard's uh, on making his way into the studio, uh, we'll just remind people that uh, in the uh, in the not too distant future, in a couple of weekends' time, so in a fortnight's time, that is the uh, VHF UHF. Field day, uh, the summer field day on the 16th and 17th of January uh, from 0100 UTC to 0100 UTC uh, across the 16th and 17th. Uh, there are two uh, modes of operation, um, 8 and 24 uh, hour. Uh, all modes, um, there are home, portable or rover stations um, and uh, the logging programs like VKCL uh, all support this, uh, this particular uh, uh, this particular uh, contest, and um, uh, so very easy to uh, to use the the logging programs and to uh, um, to uh, to it, it calculates. You put in your grid square, you get the other person's grid square. It calculates the distance. It gives you the multiplier for the particular frequencies. It does all that for you. So uh, all you've got to do is make sure that all the details in the log are correct, so you don't uh, lose valuable points. Uh, and the point scoring is based on frequency and the distance. And the distance is calculated through grid square. So you need to know where your grid square is, uh, because that's part of the exchange during the contest that you need to uh, you need to actually do. So uh, so yeah. That's uh, that's a reminder. Sixteenth and seventeenth, um, and it is also uh, the uh, the Ross Hull. Now, what I might do is I will get uh, Richard if you're listening. Richard VK7ZBX, uh, if you can make your way into the uh, studio, uh, Richard. Um, um, and whilst we're waiting for Richard, a couple of weeks ago I showed a. A, 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 um, oh, that's not right. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, I showed A, let's zoom out here. There was a, uh, a demonstrator um, base loaded vertical uh, antenna that I was working on. And it's now finished um, and uh, is is uh, actually if we use our ATU 100 um, you'll see uh, now let's zoom in here a little bit lovely lovely bubbly now I'll just move over this way a little bit because <laughs> there's a circuit diagram here this is a demonstrator antenna that I use for the um, the practical assessments um, so to demonstrate um, the the uh, uh, um, matching your antenna using uh, an SWR meter, and uh, what what this enables you to do is uh, change the uh, the SWR uh, slightly, and then uh, show that on an SWR meter on the uh, transceiver. So there is a little hundred puff. Uh, capacitor here that just gives you uh, the ability to uh, tune and detune the uh, the base loaded vertical. 
So um, you can see it's set up for 80, 40, 20 and 10. Uh, it's a little um, 1.3 metre uh, whip antenna uh, just with a little extension whip. Um, quite an inefficient antenna, um, not uh, not that efficient at all. But probably reasonable on 10 metres uh, given the 10 metre conditions. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, on uh, 80, 40 and 20, it's probably not, uh, not terribly efficient. Um, but it's good for a, a demonstration. Um, uh, piece and you can see uh, all I've got is um, uh, there's a bit of a uh, jumper clip that goes around to uh, to the um, uh, let me zoom in here again and focus so uh, it comes out to a little tag strip so it's uh, 80 40 20 and 10 along here basically the uh, the switch is uh, a uh, uh, an alligator clip and you clip it on the relevant one and then you uh, you tune using the uh, the variable capacitor so it gets you in the ballpark these uh, loading coils get you in the ballpark uh, and then uh, then you do the uh, the fine adjustment using a little bit of a uh, little bit of capacitance uh, to uh, to match uh, match the antenna to the uh, the transceiver so that's uh, um, the finished product uh, that will be used. Um, there's a, and there's a counterpoise, uh, counterpoise there as well, the minimum counterpoise for uh, 40 metres. So uh, that's how the, uh, the unit ended up. Um, and uh, it'll be uh, pressed into service on uh, the 30th of January uh, at the, uh, the first of the 2021 assessment, uh, assessment sessions which are, are happening. And if anybody out there who is watching who is interested in doing an assessment, uh, we do assessments for all uh, licenses. Um, however, we uh, on, on that particular day in the morning, we do the foundation, uh, we go through the foundation uh, license slide packs that we, we've created. Um, and they, um, uh, that, that's a recap for those doing the foundation license. We break for lunch and then we do uh, the assessment, the practical and the, uh, the theory assessment in the, uh, just after lunch. So uh, using the, um, using, uh, the, uh, the vertical, uh, base-loaded vertical. So, uh, so there you go. Now, the other, uh, the other thing I'll just, um, I'll just, uh, Richard, if you're out there, <laughs> Final call for Richard. Um, I'll just uh, we'll just go. I'll just go and grab uh, grab Richard. Uh, just bear with me. No, no, <laughs> this is um, the Ross Hole, I just oh. want to, um, so uh, let me just, I've actually hatched another plan for that too, let me just, okay, this is, um, we're back in the, the studio with uh, Richard Vico 7 zbx and I, I've got Richard in here specifically for a bit of a promo of the Ross Hole. Contest. Ross Hole contest. Hey, Richard has hatched a plan. Well, we've actually had a, a ball drink. V, v, yes. <laughs> we've had a V V one point one of the plan. Oh, V one point one. Oh, excellent. Um, excellent. I was talking with the idea. I was going to put a thing on the broadcast for Sunday okay. um, to try and get people to come on after our twenty three cinema, our very successful twenty three cinema. <laughs> uh, and Rex sort of suggested that maybe. We should actually just because it works on UTC days mm. and, and the, the, the 23 centimetre net. 11 o'clock. Yeah, so 11 o'clock's actually the changeover. Yeah, so he, he suggested, and it's a really good idea, I love that, it. that basically we, um, once the 23 centimetre net starts, while everybody's fresh because amateurs are humans and humans are funny by nature, <coughs> if we get them to stay around too much, they, they won't. Th they won't. So we mm. thought, what? Well, in the middle of the net, we'll like, do the loop once through and then we'll go ah oh, sweet now we're going to do some numbers for the Ross Hole so then we'll be able to say if you're keen if you hang around till after 11 then we can work you again, again. 
So oh, that's a fantastic idea. And hopefully we can also get people, to, if they're keen to work on sort of 6 and 2 and 70. Yep. Okay. And 10 gigs of or sort of whatever. I love it. So, yeah, that's 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 the plan. A cunning plan, Baldrick. A cunning plan, Baldrick. It's <laughs> probably interesting to see how it goes, but still you've got to try. No, no. Well, that, that's a fantastic idea. And, in fact, that reminds me, given it's the start of 2021, um, of course, the 1st of January is actually the SOTA year rollover. Uh, on So, on 11 o'clock on the 1st, uh, there were lots and lots of keen people out, of which I wasn't one, and I apologise for that. Um, it, the stars just didn't align this year. Um, but they were all out, and, and they were up on summits pre-11 um, yeah. o'clock. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, it rolls over so that they can then do their activation in 2020, UTC year, and then their activation in, in 2021, 2021 UTC cool. year. So it's double points. Um, first of January is always double points day for soda contacts. So, uh, so pretty yeah. dedicated effort too, especially after New Year's Eve. For <coughs> correct. People, perhaps. Correct. Right. Correct. And my New Year's Eve, I was we were actually up until quite late or early in the morning. So that was. I'm glad I didn't actually um, plan something because I would not have been <laughs> in a fit state. <laughs> Get that. So mm, yes, yeah. So that's fantastic. And yep. so take uh, take note on the broadcast. Yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll submit that. So we'll, we'll okay. probably submit uh, sort of version version one point one. So okay, that'll cool. be good. Cool, cool. No, no. Well, that that is fantastic, and that is an excellent idea because mm. um, basically you, every it's double points day every day at yep. eleven o'clock. So yep, yep. yeah, yeah. That's that's well, the Russell Hole is a, it's a, it's a quite a, an involved contest. I've never been in it before, but I sort of thought, well, you know, why not? It's easy. But it's, yeah, it's not that you hard. can only work the so. one per, you can only work one station once a day, which yep. sort of makes it pretty easy. Yep. Uh, and you can enter into, I think there's four different sections. You can have your best two days yep. on um, voice, yep. your best seven days on voice, or your best two days on data, or your best seven days on, on data. data. Yeah, so, yeah. you know... Um, and in fact, in the past, what we've done is use the 23 centimetre net yeah. to do those contacts times four, because there's yep. usually four Sundays, and that's that's what we've put into the mm. Ross Hull. Mm. So... You, you don't have to, you know, go out of your way if you don't want to. Um, no, that's right. But I just so. think that's good. And there's a few of us who got, you know, sort of like 10 gig stuff, you know, like be nice to maybe. And, of course, the, the, the beauty of it is that you can use the contacts from the summer field day. Did I mention the summer field day? I, um, I, no, I've mentioned that. I've mentioned that. I've um, done a promo of that. So you can use the same contacts for that. So cool. if, you get, if you go portable into a good spot and work a bit of DX, then you can use those same contacts spot as, as one of your good days for the... Ross Hull, sir. I love it. I love it. Who do I try? Give it a crack. That is fantastic. Thank you, Richard. That's good. Right. So I, I thought I'd grab you and get you to, to do a bit of a promo of uh, while well, we had it um, so that we can uh, we can make the uh, the most of the Ross Hull. Mm, no, that'd be good. Good to, good to see a few people on. Cool, cool. Okay, well, uh, just stay there because uh, we'll, we'll wrap up at that. Um, we have... Um, uh, we don't have any other comments, but thank you to Harry. Uh, and Harry, I, uh, I now, uh, I now realise Harry was one of our uh, November um, uh, Foundation candidates. So uh, waiting for uh, VK Seven H Hotel X Ray Tango HXT. So, uh, but we um, we had lots of people on right at the moment. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you've got any. Uh, comments or questions from the night uh, please 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 throw them in the chat channel uh, and we'll uh, we'll respond um, and I'll just put out a bit of a call on uh, repeater 2 uh, this is VK7 OTC just uh, putting out the call uh, on repeater 2 for our DATV experimenters night for anyone who'd like to uh, drop in a comment or uh, or a question uh, this is VK7 OTC listening I usually get Ron or somebody Maybe. Okay, 7 OTC just putting out the call for any questions or comments uh, from Repeater 2. And that's our Morse signal. So that's uh, somebody who is uh, watching who uh, has uh, keying into the uh, the repeater. So we've uh, acknowledged okay. that. <laughs> So uh, good stuff. All right, um, we'll. Uh, oh, and David, uh, David VK Seven FABE, our uh, Reese Treasurer. Um, oh, and David, you just reminded me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, um, 
the AGM, the Reist AGM. Uh, it's worth putting a, uh, a, a, a comment a out here. A date in your diary. <laughs> a date in your diary. Please save this date. The 31st of January, uh, which is a Sunday, at 11 a.m. So it's after the broadcast. Um, so so we, might, um, we, <laughs> we might have to do the... Um, uh, the Ross Hole from up here. Um, <laughs> last day of the contest. It's the last day of the contest. Why not? So, uh, so um, the AGM has been set uh, by the committee at our committee meeting last night. Last night, yeah. Um, to be the 31st of January, uh, and the notices are going out to members. Uh, it's up on the website. Uh, nomination forms, all positions are open for nomination, so the nomination forms are uh, attached to the, uh, to the AGM notice. Uh, available on the website and also available on the uh, Facebook uh, event uh, page. Uh, so we're getting the word out there that the Reist AGM is on the 31st of January. So a bit of a reminder to our members out there. So, uh, oh, and uh, Harry just mentioned I heard you on the scanner. So excellent. Good stuff. Uh, very good. Very good indeed. So uh, Harry getting, uh, getting into this uh, wonderful hobby of ours. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Best of luck to him. <laughs> That's very good. So um, our videos for tonight for our RF viewers, um, there is a couple that were actually sent to me by Ben, VK7BEN. The very first one is Why 50 Ohms, which is a fascinating video. Um, why did we end up, or why did the RF industry end up settling on 50 ohms, um, whereas the television industry settled on 75 ohms? Hmm. Um, so uh, that's a bit of a, a video on uh, why 50 ohms. And then there's a bit of a historic video, or a bit of a hysteric video, uh, by uh, out of the CSIRO archives, which is radio astronomy in 1958. Wow. Now, 1958, they had just, I think my memory serves me correctly here, they had just finished Parkes, the building of Parkes okay. telescope, which was for its time, was a state of the art uh, of radio astronomy. So uh, it's a promo video by the CSIRO uh, circa 1958. Right. And then to finish off, we've got a bit of fun, <laughs> which is Colin First. <laughs> now, for those who don't know Colin First, just look up Colin First on YouTube, and there are lots of videos from Colin. Colin is a, I think he's a plumber by trade, I think. I'm, I'm not, sure. not sure about that, but he's, I, I, he's, he's, he's very handy with a welder and a very handy with a few other bits and pieces. Um, he likes busting stuff. He likes, definitely, and that's, um, that's actually part of this particular. <laughs> he, he, one of the things he, he was right, really into a little while ago was pulse jets, and he stuck a pulse jet on a bicycle. Well, as you do. As you do, yes. Now, pulse jets are known to actually provide an awful lot of thrust, um, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, and uh, Harry, yes, I, I can certainly do that. That's that's not a problem at all. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do that once I uh, once I get off the uh, when I get off the uh, the channel. So not a problem. Um, but uh, this particular video by Colin First is. Um, <laughs> He built a huge trebuchet a la catapult, medieval catapult, um, at which he's in this middle of this huge field uh, where he tries to take out a car and a caravan and a few other things. He, he does have a little bit of a trouble actually yeah. pointing it, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, he actually uh, uses the catapult and then starts to try and fling the car with the uh, yeah. trebuchet and a few other things and uh, ends up actually... Uh, um, destroying the trebuchet. <laughs> Not a safeguard to leave around things that have load rating. Correct, correct. <laughs> he sort of makes this comment, yeah. uh, this comment, oh, the JC, we're at the limit of the JC <laughs> <laughs> lifting capacity. And we're, hmm. and he actually shows the little video of the, the, the lifting rating <laughs> like it's off the scale. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah. So, anyway, a bit of fun to finish off with. So, uh, so yeah, that's... Um, that's our videos for tonight for our RF viewers. So uh, anyway, we'll get underway with them in a short while. Uh, so this is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experimenters night. And we'll see you uh, next week on 73. 73. Through the switch. <laughs>